Hi everyone and welcome back to my video series. Today I prepared a nice little demo that you could use to automatically generate an avatar image for users in your app. So I'm going to show you exactly what I've built and what we will be building today and then we'll see step by step how to do this in the code. So in my simulator here I have this uh, simple page where I can enter any text, for example a name such as Emily and when I tap enter, then this is going to load an image from the network. Um, and this is something that is provided by a web service called uh, robohash.org, which I'll show you in a second. So the purpose of this really is that any text that you can generate in your app, such as your user ID or the email or, or a name can be associated to a, a unique image that you can then load from the network and, and customize. So this is all very cool and uh, as part of this lesson you will learn about a few new useful things in Flutter because we will look at how to make HTTP requests to load the images from the web and we will also see a special widget called Future Builder which offers some useful placeholder functionality when loading stuff from the web and uh, as you can see in the image here we will also look at customizing widgets so that we can change their appearance and for example change their shape and also add a subtle gradient effect uh, in the background. Now before we dive right into the code I also wanted to show you this Robohash uh, website uh, just quickly so you can see what it can do and how you could further customize it if you wanted to use it. Um, so this is where you can generate your unique images from any text uh, which is I admit is a pretty cool feature and here, for example, we could type in any name such as Adam and when we generate, it will then um, produce a URL uh, with a name that we passed and we can then use this uh, to load the image uh, within our app. So uh, that's very useful. Uh, it has different sets of avatars. One of them is robots, uh, but you can also have monsters and, and kittens and other things if you are so inclined. So definitely a very good uh, service to keep in mind. Okay, I wanted to say just one more thing about this service and that is how you might actually use it in your apps and uh, if you have users that sign in for the first time within your application uh, typically you will generate a user ID uh, which is associated to their account within, within the app and what you can do here is take that unique ID uh, load an avatar with the Robohash service and that's just how you can personalize kind of the experience for the users because they will get a unique image associated to their ID. And so this is something that you could consider using. Okay, so I think we are ready to start coding our app. So we're gonna head over to our uh, Visual Studio code editor and, and let's create a new project. Uh, in Visual Studio code, we can do that by going to view common palette on the menu and we can select a new Flutter project. We're going to name this uh, Robohash Demo Flutter uh, with underscores. And we're gonna just save it in some folder and, and we are ready to, to get started. So if we head over to the files for this project, uh, we are back to our uh, main file over here and currently the, the IDE is setting up all the packages that are needed for uh, the Flutter project to run and now that this operation is complete we have a brand new project. Okay, so uh, the next thing we're gonna do now is to clear out some of the boilerplate code that always come with the Flutter project and specifically what we're going to do is just for this application keep the myapp uh, root class within our project but instead of using the my home page that we just deleted here, we're going to create a new um, component. And that component is going to be called um, avatar page. Now the next thing that we have to do is to create this avatar page. So we're gonna go to the folder here library and we're going to create a new file called avatar page.dart. And we can start coding it up. So we can say class avatar page. 
Uh, we're going to make this extend our stateful widget. And we should also remember to import our material uh, package so that Flutter has all the files that it needs. Um, because we just created a stateful widget, we also have to implement the create state method uh, and we'll have this uh, return uh, new avatar page state which will be the class that we create right now so we're going to say class av avatar uh, page state uh, which extends state of avatar page and the last thing we need to do when creating this is to specify a build method which is where all the code for creating our widgets uh, will go. So this is just the normal uh, boilerplate code that we always write when we create a stateful widget. Okay, so uh, inside this build method we are now ready to start adding some code. So we are going to add a return new scaffold and inside here we're going to have an application bar, uh, which is a new app bar object, uh, which is going to be made with a title. And for that, we're going to choose new text and we're going to say greetings robot, uh, like in our demo app. And after that, we're going to specify the body for our scaffolding. So that's going to be for now a new container. And we are also going to, um, inside our container, we're going to center our content. And, and within this, uh, we are going to create a new column because we will need to um, align our content vertically within our page. So if you remember, we're going to have a form here with an input and we're going to have the avatar, this label over here, and we just want to align these elements vertically. So a column is the right component to use for this. So this column will have an array of children. Uh, for now, we're just going to leave this empty. And for now, we're good. Um, I'm going to save the file, uh, which has just actually reformatted the code. Um, that is a useful tip that I might have for you. So in Visual Studio Code, there's an option. If you go on here, uh, Preferences and Settings, and um, in your User Settings tab here, you can set an option called Editor.FormatOnSave, colon, and then you write this to True. And what that will do is format the code every time you save a file. So that's definitely a useful feature to have, which I've enabled in my app. So let's carry on. Now, the next thing that I want to do now is to create uh, an input form with a text field that I can use to enter the name for uh, my avatar. So I'm going to do that now. And for that purpose, I'm going to create a new widget method called um, build input form. And for this, I'm going to create a form. Uh, so I'm going to say new form. and Inside that, um, I'm going to have a child, uh, which is going to be a new column for now. And inside that, I'm going to have an array of children. And as part of that, I want to create a new text form field. And that inside uh, will have a, a decoration, which is what we use to show our prompt to the user. So this is an input decoration uh, property, which has a label text. And here we could say, for example, enter your unique identifier. And um, this could also have um, a label style uh, so that it shows nicely. So label style here, we could say a new text style with a good font size of, uh, for example, 20. Oh, so this is how we specify the style for the placeholder text within our form field. And then we can actually specify also the style of the text that the user will type in. So this is going to be a new text style. Uh, for this case, we're going to choose a font size of 24, so a bit bigger. 
and a color um, of colors dot, uh, black, for example. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to actually add a validator for this text fill. And the reason for that is that we don't want the to ever use an empty string um, as the the identifier for our avatar. So here the validator takes a, a value, and if the, we're going to say if the value is empty, uh, then we're going to show a text which says name uh, can't um, be empty, and uh, if the value is not empty, then we, are not, we got nothing to do, so we return no. Finally, we need to provide an onSaved method uh, for our uh, text input, and this is where we get a name, and we're going to say that we are going to assign this to a variable called name, which we have not created yet, um, and so this is a good time to introduce some state uh, to our um to our avatar so this is where we define a string called name and this is what we will be using to query the robohash api okay uh, there is one more thing that we need to do and that is to add a new property here called on field submitted and this is what gets called when the user presses on enter or or confirms that the is finished entering the text so this uh, gives us a name and we are going to call um, create a new method called um, update name with name uh, which we are going to define uh, now. So let's create that as well. So we're going to have void update name which take a string uh, called name. And this is where we need to validate and save our form. Now, I've already covered how to deal with forms and validation and saving of the data in my previous videos about a Firebase login. So here I'm just going to use the same approach. I'm going a bit fast here, but if you want to review how this is all done, make sure to check out our uh, my previous videos. So in any case, uh, here we're going to create a static uh, final form key, which is basically a global reference to the form uh, within our widget tree. And so this is going to be a global key of type form state. And we're going to link this to the form in a second. Uh, let me just here assign an empty string to the name initially. And how are we going to use the form state? So here we can basically say a final form, which is form key dot current state so this is how we are accessing the state of our form and uh, we are going to say that if the form validates correctly then we can save it like this and the next thing that we want to do is because the save method actually is going to um, set the name property uh, of our form uh, up here uh, we want to also trigger a redraw of the widget tree. So normally we do this with the set state call. And because the form save already takes care of updating the name, the set state call can be empty. So all this does is trigger a reload of the widget tree. Uh, we must also not forget to uh, ensure that the form is referenced here. So we're going to give it a key and that is going to be the form key. Okay, so the code for our form is now complete. Um, the only thing that we need to remember to do, obviously, is to add it to the children array. And I think we're good to go. So we can save our document, and now we can actually uh, run this up in the simulator to get an initial preview uh, and see if the form renders correctly. Um, now, just to give you maybe a brief overview. So we've uh, created an avatar page state, uh, which looks like we are not uh, calling correctly from our root page. So let's fix that as well. And uh, yeah, we forgot to do this. So it's calling into a symbol that is not defined because we have forgot to import it. So if we do import avatar page, this should now solve this problem. And we can try to compile again. 
and if we head back to our avatar page we can see how we have created a scaffold as usual with an app bar and a container and uh, we created a column where we will be laying out all our widgets and the first one that we created is our input form so we have defined the form um, with a text form field inside we uh, set up a placeholder for it, uh, the style, the validator to ensure that the name is not empty and the code for um, saving and, and submitting the form. So let's see how this looks like in our simulator, which is just starting up right now. And here maybe we could already do a quick test to see for example if the form validates correctly just to show you how this works so um, I'm just gonna enable the soft keyboard for my simulator like this and I should be able to see that when I submit the form by pressing the done button it tells me that the name can be empty so this proves that our validator that we put in place here is working correctly now the last thing that we want to test is that when the user enters a name that is not empty in this form then this is saved correctly in our page. So the way to do that is to go up here uh, inside our update name method and we're gonna quickly add a print statement where we're gonna say uh, saved and then we're gonna use the name. Now at this stage if we reload our application and test it out we can now enter a name such as Emma and when we submit the form we can save down here in the debugger that is being reported as saved. So this proves that we can now save names within our form. So let's continue on the next video.